Okay. I usually... All right, guys. Um, today, we are doing Unit 1, Factors and Multiples. And our learning target up here in green, I need a volunteer to read our I can statement. Okay, start us off, Maddie. Yeah. Okay. I can determine when a Hold on. Can I stick with you? Uh huh. I know. It's a weird angle. Okay. I can determine whether a given whole number in the range 2100 is prime or composite. Composite. So we're going to be working with prime and composite numbers today. And the second part of our learning target, I love. In order to be successful, I must understand how to find factor pairs of a given prime number 1 through 100. Yes. So the second part of today is we're going to find factor pairs. Okay. So first of all today, let's learn about factor pairs. Now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint. I think you guys know factor pairs because um, as you guys have been finding the area, you've been finding factor pairs. So, if I have a number like 42, the factors of 42, one, of, one set of pairs could be 7 times 6. Anybody know how else we can make 42? Yeah, Trevor. 6 times 7? The opposite way. We would say it's the same pair of numbers, but yeah, we could switch the order. Yeah. We could do 42 times 1. We could do 42 times 1. Okay. Yeah? So what we would say is we would say these two numbers are a factor pair of 42. These two numbers are a factor pair of 42. And these two numbers are a factor pair. Do you guys remember this? Maybe? <laughs> okay. If a number is timesing by another number, we say it's a factor. And if we have two factors, they're a pair. So factor pair. Okay, that's your background information. Um, so now we're going to turn in your books. Which page? I see a few of you opened up to the warm-up already. Page 6, and I'll write it up here. Turn to page 6. And I want you to find the value of each expression and try to do it mentally in your head. I'll give you a minute or two, okay? All right, I think most of us are probably done. So raise your hand, what's two times, well, let's just all say our answers to these. What's two times seven? Fourteen. What's four times seven? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. Three times seven. Seven times seven. Forty-nine. Which famous Bronco quarterback had the number seven? Hmm. Um, Who? Broncos. Um, I know Teddy Bridgewater. Um, what? The number is retired. Nobody else is allowed to have it. Um, I know it, Oh, you guys are so fired. John Thank you! He inspires children. <laughs> All these sevens. My, my brain is on the Broncos today because you know what Saturday is? What? It's the first preseason game. And the okay. Oh, and close it on your pencil. And let's talk about what we're going to do today. So today, I'm going to be assigning each group, and I will tell you about your group in a minute, um, to numbers. Each number is going to represent the area of a rectangle. Remember, area is the number of tiles, right? Okay. On grid paper, 
So each group is going to need some centimeter grid paper. Okay. You're going to draw all the possible rectangles that have the given area. You're going to label the area and the side lengths. Okay. You're going to use each pair of side lengths only once. So like earlier we said you could have 6 times 7 and you could have 7 times 6. So you can only use that one time. Okay? So um, if you use 6 times 7, then you can't do 7 times 6, okay, for this activity. Then number two, when you think you've drawn all the possible rectangles for both areas, you're going to cut out your rectangles and glue them on a poster um, for each area you were assigned, okay? Um, I don't think black paper is going to work. I'm going to look for paper. So if you got the numbers, I don't know, 11 and 27, you would do one poster for 11 and one poster for 27. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you're going to get a number. You're going to draw as many rectangles as you can on centimeter grid paper. Then you're going to cut them out and glue them on poster paper. Step three is display your poster for all to see. Um, you're going to give it to me when you're done, and I will display it for all to see. I'll probably tape it all up there. We'll see how many we have. Okay. All right. So, go to the next page. Is that where it's at? All right. Here is our activity synthesis. And you can be open to question number two. And if you didn't get anything written down, you could write down some of the things that we say or write, okay? Um, but raise your hand. What was the same and what was different between the rectangles on the posters? Riker. Okay. Alice? Some of them are the same because they only have like one rectangle or like two rectangles and they're different because um, they might have different rectangles. Yeah. Raise your hand if your number was 11. Who had 11? There were two groups. And how many rectangles did you find for the number 11? Just one, right? So we would say the number 11 is a prime number because it only has two factors, 1 and 11. If you can only make one rectangle out of a number, it's what we call prime. All the rest of these numbers were composite because there was more than one rectangle, right? So here is the big question. How do you know that all possible rectangles have been found for the given area. So if your number was 24, how did you know when you were done? It's a really hard question, Reese. Because it added up to the number that you have. Okay. Okay, add it up to the number that you have. Okay. Um, are there any more rectangles we can draw? Why or why not? I don't know what they're talking about with this question. <laughs> I'm thinking, are there other rectangles besides the numbers I gave you? Yeah, could we do this for other numbers? Yeah. Absolutely. We call 1 and 21 a factor pair of 21 because each of them is a factor of 21 and multiplying them gives you 21. Another factor pair of 21 is 3 and 7, right? So, we are actually running out of time. Um, so we're not going to do this last little part. Guys, the big idea today is that a factor pair are two numbers you multiply to get another number. OK? 
okay? And that there are different rectangles that you can make with those factor pairs. So, this is your cool down. Now remember, what do I do tomorrow? We're going to go over it, right? First thing, right? So I'm going to pass out your cool down in a minute, but I'm going to give you guys 10 minutes to do it today, okay? As the year progresses and we kind of get quicker, I'm going to give you less time. But today I'm going to give you 10 minutes. Here's what I want you to do. And I'm just going to write it. Well, let me grab a blank slide. Ah! Oh, man, it's going to start all over. <laughs> okay, that's not going to work. Um, I'm probably just going to write it on the board. First, you're going to do your cool down. Now, I went through and I graded yesterday's cool down. Or was it? It was the day before. Because yesterday was conduct code, right? Friday's cool down. About half of you guys forgot something very, very important. Does anybody know what it is? Name? Name! It was your name! Yeah, you have to put your name on your cool down. Even though you're putting it in your pocket, when I sit down to grade them, sometimes they get out of order and I don't know who is who. Put your name on your paper, okay? So, first you're going to do your cool down. You're going to turn it in. Then you're going to Put away your mat, and you're going to take out your book box, and you're going to read until it's time to start reading, okay? Does that make sense? And I'll write that up here, and I'll put a timer. Yeah, I think the, it's still recording. Yeah, yeah. You guys don't need to tell me if it's recording. We already talked about that. Thank you. Okay? Questions? Okay. So, um...